I'm excited to share this video with you today because I believe that God has a great purpose for our church. We are in a unique time, and I know that this video is a, a little different and a little longer than normal, but I promise if you'll stay to the end, then God's going to speak to you, and he's going to inspire you to do some great things. And so I want us to, to just real quick... Uh, talk about something because I believe that we're in a time where people are really searching for hope. And as Christ followers, we have the hope of Jesus, the hope that people are looking for, the hope of the world. And so I believe that we have to be ready in season and out of season, even in strange times, to preach the Word of God and to lead people closer to Him and to meet needs with love and to do things for people, to love people until they ask why. And so I, I hope that, that God will speak to you. I want you to listen to this. This is Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. This is the words of Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. And I believe that that same Holy Spirit is with us today to bring a message of hope and deliverance to the world. I want you to watch this video. This is from Tony Campolo. He's a nationally known speaker, author, and sociologist, and he has a powerful word for us today. Don't, don't leave. Watch this. If you go to Honolulu from the East Coast, those of you who have been there know that you wake up like at 3 o'clock in the morning and you can't get back to sleep. And I'm, I'm hungry. And I, I went looking for something to eat. And even at that wee hour of the morning in a bustling city like Honolulu, you can't find a place that's open. But up a side street, I did find a place. I went in, sat down on the stool. It was a greasy spoon, no booze, just a row of stools in front of the counter. And, and this fat guy with a dirty, filthy, greasy apron came out, pulled his cigar out, put it down, and said, what do you want? I didn't touch the menu. It was one of those plastic menus that grease had piled up on it. And I knew that if I opened it, something extraterrestrial would crawl out. I said, I'd like a cup of coffee and a donut. So he poured the coffee, and then he did this. And he picked up the donut. <laughs> I hate that. So I'm sitting there, 3.30 in the morning, drinking my coffee and eating this dirty donut. Into the room come about eight or nine prostitutes, and they sat down on either side of me. And I tried to disappear. And the one on my immediate right, said, tomorrow's my birthday, she said to her friend. I'm going to be 39. Her friend said, so what do you want me to do? Sing happy birthday? You want a cake? What, do you, what should we do? Have a party for you? You're going to be 39. First woman said, look, I don't, I'm not expecting anything. I just, why do you have to put me down? And then she said, with a crack in her voice, I've never had a birthday party in my whole life. I don't expect to have one now. That did it. I waited till you know, until they all left, and I was the only one left. I called Harry over. I said, do they come in here every night? He said, yeah. I said, the one next to me? He said, Agnes. I said, tomorrow's her birthday. What do you say we decorate the place? And when she comes in tomorrow, we have a birthday party for her because I heard her say she's never had a birthday party in her whole life. He said, mister, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Jane, he called his wife out of the back room. She did the cooking. He wants to throw a birthday party for Agnes. I thought, jeez, this is great. She comes out. She grabs my hand. She says, mister, you wouldn't understand this because of what she does, you know. But she's one of the kind people in this town. She's one of the caring people in this town. I said, uh, look, can I, can I decorate the place? She said, to your heart's content. I said, I'm going to bring a birthday cake. Harry said, oh, no, the cake's my thing. I thought, oh, geez, you know, God. <laughs> so I got there the next morning. I got there the next morning at about 2.30. I had bought crepe paper at the Kmart, strung it across the plate, place, made a big sign that said, happy birthday, Agnes, put it on the mirror behind the counter. I had the place spruced. 
Jane, who got, does the cooking, got the word out on the street so that by 3.15, every prostitute in Honolulu was squeezed into this place. I mean, people, it was wall-to-wall -wall prostitutes and me. 3.30 in the morning, the door opens. In comes Agnes and her friends. I got everybody poised, everybody ready. The minute she walks through the door, we yell, Happy birthday, Agnes! And all start cheering like mad. I've never seen anybody so stunned in my life. Her knees buckled. They steadied her and got her and sat her down on a chair. And we started singing, Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday, dear Agnes. And when they brought out the cake, she lost it and started to cry. Harry just stood there with a the cake, and finally he said, All right, Agnes, knock it off. <laughs> blow out the candles, Agnes. Come on, blow out the candles. She tried, and she couldn't, so he blew out the candles and handed her the knife and said, Now cut the cake. Come on now, cut the cake. She sat there for a long moment, and then she said to me, Is it all right if I don't cut the cake? She said, What I'd really like to do is take the cake home and show it to my mother. I said, it's your cake. She stood up. I said, do you have to do it now? She said, I live two doors down. Let me take the cake home. I'll bring it right back. I promise. She picked up the cake. She pushed through the crowd and out the door. And as the door swung slowly shut, dead silence, the whole group was stunned. I didn't know what to say. Finally, after a few uneasy moments, I said, what do you say we pray? It's weird looking back on it now. <laughs> a sociologist leading a prayer meeting with a bunch of prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning in a diner in Honolulu was the right thing to do, and I prayed that God would deliver her from what dirty, filthy men had done to her, usually starting like it, you know, when they're about 12 or 13, and, and then they're ruined and hurt. And when I finished praying that God would make her new, that God would give her back everything that had been taken from her, I said amen and lifted my eyes, and Harry was right in my face. He said, hey, Camp Paulo, you told me you were a sociologist. You're no sociologist. You're a preacher. What kind of church you belong to? And one of those moments when you come up with just the right words, I said, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> I thought that was a clever answer. <laughs> I'll never forget his response. He looked back and he said, no, you don't. No, you don't. He said, I would join a church like that. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Wouldn't we all join a church that threw birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning? I got news for you. That is the kind of church that Jesus came to create. He came to create a church that was filled with people that move out into the world and bring celebration and joy into the lives of those who have nothing to celebrate and have no joy, to bring celebration to those who are brokenhearted and beaten down, to lift them up and give them some joy in their life. That's what you are called to do. You are called to be agents of God to spread His love and His joy into a loveless and joyless world. That's what you're called to do. And if you surrender to Christ and let Him cleanse you and let the Spirit fill within you, His Spirit will constrain you, says Scripture, constrain you, drive you to do loving and joyful things in a world devoid of joy and love. Do you hear me? That's a powerful message, isn't it? And it shows us that we have to start thinking differently, that we have to find new creative ways to reach people for Jesus Christ. And so as we continue to build this online ministry here at our church, we need your help. We need you to, whenever you see a post where we're promoting a ministry or promoting one of our services, we need you to share that post. We need you to help us come up with creative ways to meet people's needs, to, to minister to people and to reach people with the gospel of Jesus. Consider these words from Tony Campolo. He said, Jesus never says to the poor, come find the church, 
But he says to those of us in the church, go into the world and find the poor, hungry, homeless, and imprisoned. And I believe that that's what God's calling us today. God bless you. Have a great week and continue to seek his will for your life.